Hi, my name is Tara Varney. I am five foot seven. I weigh 140, and my hair is brown and my eyes are brown. Listen, can I tell you something? You promise not to tell anyone. Well, Dennis took me up to his room to see his newspaper clippings. I was in his room. And we walked in, and he kicked these underwear under the bed. And then he walked over and got a Kleenex to blow his nose, just like he probably does every day that I'm not there. And then he went to sit down. He tossed a pair of pants from the chair to the bed and sat down. A pair of pants. And then I had to go to the bathroom. And so I went to the bathroom and I walked in. And there was a razor by the sink with a blade in it and everything I checked. And there's a washcloth still damp. And there was a towel over the sho shower with the middle all dark and wrinkled like he had used it to dry off sometime. I turned around. I turned around, and the sit-down part of the toilet was up. Oh my God, I had to ask him to take me home right now, right away, and so he did. And the thing is, is I think I hurt his feelings. I mean, I couldn't help it. I was scared, all jumpy inside. I can't describe it. Am I a terrible person? Was it terrible of me to ask to go home? Are you waiting up for Henry? Of course not. I think you are, Nellie. Jill, I'm not. If you were, why would you be? Don't be silly, I'm not. I see the way you look at him. I see the way he looks at you. How? It's no good you're pretending surprise. I see what I see. You can't see anything with your eyes. I know what I know. And I'm asking what? You're thinking about going away with him. Jill, have you gone off your chump? I asked him to stay on because I thought he'd be a bit of fun at the house. But he's began stamping around like he's half owner and he's looking you up and down like he's a farmer checking stock at a fair. Jill! If you haven't seen him, then I have. He moves to you like a stable hand with a new horse. We came out here to get away from looks like that, didn't we? Yes, we well, did. If Henry's going to start fiddling around with that same kind of look, we'll have to get away from him too, won't we? Jill! Well, I think he's already started. He's not a young boy, Nellie. He's a grown man. He's got a gun in his hand and ideas in his head. And he's not the sweet thing we imagined him to be. He's got a temper and a, a reputation for trouble. Whatever trouble he's got. I'm not talking about him loafing off the work. Although we have yet to see how long he's going to give us a hand. Jill, will you just... I'm talking about his prowling through the woods. They told me he's out there every night. Every night, Nellie. Warm or cold, light or dark. He was 15 that time. He does, has the same look now. Whenever he mentions the, the animals or the woods or the gun, he gets an excitement in him that shines through like a beacon. You must be dumb if you can't see that. Are you frightened of him, Jill? Is that what it is? Yes. Well, I'm not. I know you aren't. That's what I'm arguing about. Listen now. Nellie! Listen! We've asked him on, and he said yes. And I can't see anything that he's done yet that's been a real bother. And if he's got some great need to be off in the woods while the rest of us sit by our fires, then more power to him. He's a bigger man for it than we are. Why? The woods aren't the safest place you would name, are they? A gun isn't an easy thing to handle, well, is it? Henry was right when he said that those gossipers were jealous of him. They're jealous of us, too, because we're doing what none of them thought was possible. And we're doing what none of them thought we could do alone because, well, that would prove that we are better off than they are. 
And if you are frightened of Henry, then it's for the same reason. You think that he's better than you, braver than you, and he is. He can't cook, but he can provide. He can't hang curtains, but he can sturdy a barn. He can't sit, but he can run. Look, Joel, I'm not angry at you. I'm not trying to slight you. If you're tired now, then go on up to bed. I won't be long to follow, all right? Please? Please? All right. I'll heat your bottle while you ready up. Nellie. What? You won't leave me though, will you? Will you? Jill. How could I leave you? Leaving me would be like leaving half of my life. Go on, Jill. Go on. My name is Tara Barney. Listening winds overhear my privacies, spoken aloud, in your absence, but for your sake. When you, mustachioed, nutmeg, brown lotus, sit beside the overland shoji. My thoughts are particular, of your light lips and hungry hands, bright tai chi urgencies into my body. I leap, float, run, to spring cool springs into your embrace. Then we match grace. This girl, neither feather nor fan, drifted and tossed. Oh, but then I had power. Hi, my name is Tara Varney. First, I will do a song from Sweeney Todd by the Sea. Then I will do yet another song. It's from Carousel. And I will do this. <laughs> Come by it, except I'll see ooh, ooh, ooh. We shouldn't try it, though, till it's legal for two ooh, ooh. But a seaside wedding could be devised Near a full wedding legitimized My eyelids will flatter, I'll turn into butter The moment I mutter, I do I should have been more strange, I must confess. 
But that thou overheardest, ere I was ware my true love's passion. Therefore pardon me, and not impute this yielding to light long, which this dark night hath so discovered. The next monologue I'd like to do is from First Night by Jack Neary. I couldn't find God in bowling. I tried. I really did. See, I enjoyed the game like crazy. But I couldn't for the life of me apply bowling to the spiritual life of my soul. There was absolutely nothing religiously enriching about bowling. So I started thinking, what other things might I enjoy that aren't necessarily user-friendly with the Almighty? I mean, I really tried to make it work. I wore the black, I sang the hymns, I prayed the prayers. I married Christ, period. There's no such thing as divorcing the big guy. I tried to live up to my vow. But it just wasn't working. Something kept getting in the way. Been a hippie. I think it was the first time I made the 3 7 10 split. It was wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> and it was plain as the nose on my face. I had followed the Lord for 20 years. Why couldn't he follow me for a while? I mean, I am me. God is a part of me. That isn't going to change. See, it's, it's so simple. It's not what you do. It's who you are. Thank you. I did my first play when I was 11, and I kind of get got bitten by that bug and when I went into high school I took all the classes and did all the shows and I sang in the choir and, and when I went into when I went to college I went to Central Missouri State for two years and I just automatically went into the theater department and after two years I kind of started having one questions and I started wondering if that's what I really wanted to spend my life doing, knowing that it's it's such a cutthroat business. It's it's so hard to get into. Um, so I took a couple of years off to think about it, and I didn't do a show for about a year. And um, I started uh, dreaming about it at night, and I got a job at a dinner theater. I wasn't in the shows, but I would just look at the shows and I, 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 I want to do that. And the first show I did in a year was um, Miracle Worker. And oh, I, I was, I, all of a sudden it was, it, it was clear and I, I was, I was happy again. You know, if you want to be busy, you will be busy. <laughs> if you're not working, it is, it's because you're going, you're hiding somewhere. <laughs> it's not because you're here. And it's absolutely true, and it's so exciting. It's so exciting to be some, to be somewhere where something is going on all the time. Ten things are going on all the time, and um, so I work in the shop, and I've worked in the shop since I got here. And when you say work in the shop. You want to explain a little bit uh, I, uh, what you mean? I work in the scene shop. I'm I'm a, a scene shop assistant. And so what kinds of things do you do? <laughs> what kinds of things that uh, I build this? <laughs> Um, I, I've done carpentry, I've uh, been an electrician, I've um, done some scene painting, I've, uh, <laughs> I've uh, done the arc welding thing, uh, and a lot of musical theater. I did uh, Orpheus in the Underworld last year, which was an opera. Um, I did um, during Tent two years ago. I was in um, Starting Here, Starting Now, which was sort of a musical review type thing. Uh, I've done straight plays. I've done um, kind of performance arty kind of thing, um, a performance of poetry, which was very exciting and interests me a lot, and I'd like to do more of it. 
Um, why, why does you said you enjoyed performing poetry? Uh, why did you? Why, why, why did you find it exciting? Well, I, I sort of stumbled into it. It was just something that I was asked to be a part of, and um, the idea excited me. I had never done anything like that before, and when we got into it, it, it was really exciting to take a poet's words and how they looked on the sheet of paper and try and figure out how they wanted them, if they were to be said, how we should say them and still keep the, the, the poet's intent. Um, it, it was really exciting to work with and all the different interpretations that you can bring into that and, and, and all the different mediums. It, there's, there's so many things you can do with, with something in that format. And then, and, then, and then the poem, once you have mastered the poem in a performance kind of a mode, you what you give it directly to the audience or um, sometimes um, what we ended up doing on occasion we, we delivered it directly to the audience we we also played with having the theater completely dark and moving around the theater around the audience so our words were surrounding them in the dark and they didn't know where the next line was going to come from we um, we played with different props coming in from the audience, coming in from over here, coming, and and different relationships with ourselves and and set pieces, and it was really exciting. It was really exciting to try and 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 deliver the the poet's meaning to it to an audience that may not be exposed to that kind of thing. It was really neat. As far as uh, rep companies go. Um, that's something I, I learned at our last set of auditions, that they really look for technical experience in an actor. They really, they, they don't want somebody... When you say last audition, meaning when you went out into looking for professional right. or uh, additional academic opportunities. Right, in the um, auditions in St. Louis. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, I had one callback, one company that called me back asked to see my tech technical resume and I was oh, I, 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 I. so um, they, well, they want some people with with technical experience uh, your chances of getting hired as a technician actor are greater than if you were just an actor or just a technician so it's good that I had that experience and it's in my my field the field that I want to be in I that's I don't want to be backstage but it's it's still in the theater it's still it's still part of it. It's a, an integral part of it. That's very exciting. Right. I'm scared of leaving here <laughs> um, because I've, I've been so active, because I've, I've, I've done everything I can get my hands on. I'm afraid of, of leaving and, and, and being, having free time. <laughs> um, I've been going to auditions uh, I've, I've gone to two in um, Chicago, I've gone to a one here, one in St. Louis, there's another one in Kansas City coming up, um, trying to trying to find uh, summer work, there's a lot of summer repertory companies trying to cast now, but there are also some year-round um, uh, people, companies looking. And um, so any, anywhere that they want me, I'll take them. I suspect that I'll be doing musical theater um, quite a bit because my voice is one of my strong points. Um, and that is fine with me. I love musical theater. I love musical theater. I'm not, I'm not gonna be cast as a dancer. I'm not gonna be doing chorus line. <laughs> but I, I've taken some dance classes so I can at least have some idea of the vocabulary, <laughs> um, but but it's exciting. Um, it's exciting.